Here's a setup with two loudspeakers facing the same direction. So then you play a sound and you bring a microphone connected to oscilloscope, move a line distance away. So you move here, move up. This is an interference experiment, by the way. You can try it out if you have a loudspeaker and a microphone. Which statement about the waves is not a necessary condition? So what is not a condition for? The microphone to detect a fixed point where there is no sound. No sound means destructive interference has occurred at that point. Destructive interference. Okay, so you can imagine this. Like at some point, you have let me draw a graph. Loud intensity, no intensity. Loud, soft. Loud, soft. Loud. Okay, it is the axis sideways of intensity. Okay, so at some point, uh, we we want no sound. Ah, no sound means no sound. Ah, these points are this here all no sound because everything cancel out. Destructive. So the waves must be emitted in phase. Is that a condition? Actually, no. Must be in phase, meh. Out of phase, also okay. Ah. Out of phase, also okay. So I could, uh, from what one loudspeaker I could do, I could start from the top, up, down. The other one I could also start from the top, down, up, down. Or I want to emit them out of phase. Can the pattern will just be different? Lah. Start on the bottom, up, down, up. Okay, you see how I start differently? The first one I go, I'll start on the top and I go down. The second one I start on the bottom and I go up. Oh, face, still can. You will still have points in space where it is constructive and destructive. It's just our oh, face. Ah. So, our oh, face also okay. But maybe what should replace this sentence is. The waves emitted must have a constant phase difference. Ah, that one, yes. Ah. That is a necessary condition. Constant phase difference or phase relationship. But if it's just out of phase, okay, ah, no problem. Okay, next one. Not necessary, really. Eh? Oh, this, so this could be the answer. Uh -huh. So let's circle it up. Let's check the rest. The waves must be emitted with similar amplitude. Yes, we need a similar amplitude. For perfectly destructive interference. Perfectly destructive interference. If you're not sure why that is, consider this picture that I'm going to draw for you. At destructive interference, if you have a wave of, let's say, amplitude A, and you meet another wave that has amplitude negative A, What's the resultant? A plus negative A is zero, right? Okay, so this will be zero. Perfectly cancel out. No, no amplitude. But the problem is, what if you have one where the amplitude is A and the other one, the amplitude is negative half A. Slightly different amplitude already. Will you get zero or not? Will you perfectly cancel out? No. So this one cannot perfectly cancel each other out. So there will not be a point where there is no sound at all. Okay, so this is not a, not a necessary. I mean, this is a necessary condition. You must have same same amplitude. Must have same frequency, of course, lah. No different frequency. How you want to interfere? <laughs> same wavelength and same frequency means the same thing. Okay, so these two are kind of related to each other. Oh, so the best choice here would be A. Though. B is a bit close, but you need to know how they add together. Right, so hopefully that's helpful in helping you think about how these experiments can be set up. There are quite a few other tricky questions similar to this. Go check those out. But that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.